relent, relentless belief in humanity and human laugh potential. at relentless is because if do you watch what we do in the shadows the tv show or the movie i have heard about this show a million mm -hmm. times i have said i need to watch it a million times and yeah this you is should only probably further watch it. proof of this yeah i just the one of the lead characters name is nandor the relentless yes and, i think uh, i saw one of those episodes that's him. what i think of uh when i hear the word relentless now yeah. I love that. I'm a, I'm very okay with a, a vampire reference mm -hmm. in this. So, all right, cool, Jordan. So, talk to me a little bit about what. Talk to me about what you think of when you think of human potential. What does that mean to you? Human potential. Hmm. So for me, it's very visual. I've talked about this before, and it, 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 I envision it as this kind of this white hot center of a person. And no matter what happens to them, no matter what perceived failures or shortcomings or downfalls they experience, or no matter what is maybe thrown at them or in their path by you know by fate god or the cosmos right or maybe or whatever words are thrown at them by other people whatever tries to kind of bury them or sink them or bring them down something in them isn't willing to give up something there's a fight in and I think all people that to varying degrees is what is activated when people uh, fulfill their potential. They're, when they are able to push through uh, that adversity and overcome the obstacles, you know, that it takes. And the other thing is... Uh, you know, that white hot glowing energetic center is surrounded by a bunch of wetware and circuitry in the human being that is in itself its own obstacle. So we are sometimes our own worst enemies. And so some of these things that we need to overcome or words that, are, that we think are coming from the outside by other people Sometimes it's a story we're telling to ourselves. Sometimes we are putting those obstacles in our own way. And, and once again, fulfilling our own potential or pushing through and uh, becoming, you know, whatever is next is sometimes a battle with ourself. And, you know, that can be harder. That can be trickier than than having something come at you from the outside and, and easily identifiable and evadable or manipulatable or whatever, right? When it's coming at you from yourself, sometimes, you know, whether it's that shadow element that is, you know, behind you that you're not aware of, or whether it's just negative self-talk, you know, or inner dialogue, uh, sometimes that's harder to overcome. So when I think of human potential, I think of that white hot light that that power and that potentiality coming to fruition. And there being some kind of intelligence there too, right? Whether it's heart intelligence or gut intelligence or intellect or all three combined, right? But that that white energy, it doesn't have to be white either, you know, depending on how your aura is feeling that day or how you're activated, but um, that that energy, that light, is uh, i'll say aligned you know we want to talk about things like the chakras right or or kundalini energy that that is aligned and that is working and flowing the the plumbing or the circuitry is is functional and that you're able to grow and thrive and evolve and unfold and expand in ways that you know you have decided what your purpose is and, and the direction you're headed and and you can go there intentionally 
How's that for an answer? Fantastic. Fantastic. So where do you where do you see a lot of misconceptions in common culture about what human potential is, how we treat others and their potential? Like where are some of our big tripping points? Tripping points on our way to so when we we think about someone's potential, be it ourselves mm. or somebody else's, like where where do we you maybe see some misguided direction in how we approach these things? Or maybe that's a better question. How should we approach human potential? Yeah, well, I mean, let me take the first question first. I mean, I think what comes to mind for me when I think of stumbling blocks, you know, on the way to fulfilling our potential or living up as sometimes how we say to our potential. I think it's, I think just even in the way that language is put together, living up to your potential, it's usually coming at you from the outside. Like when I think about, that statement, it's usually somebody telling you that you should live up to your potential. Um, and I think there's one of the major stumbling blocks is confusing um, the image of your own that you have may hold of your potential and the image that has been kind of transposed or laid on top of you or projected onto you by other people. So I can see where people might struggle living up to their potential if they're telling a story of themselves as a, a banker or a doctor or a lawyer or whatever, like because culturally or, you know, just um, th that's the story in their family that's told that uh, this is what they should be. It's really hard to live up to the potential that that is somebody else's image or imprint of you. Um, so I think part of the so and then the other stumbling block i think is beyond identity and the projection of of what the potential means the other part i think might be that there are frameworks or models or maps that we can follow to fulfilling our potential and if we are too you know what we call step reliant you know, if we are too married to the map or to one process or recipe or checklist, um, that potential might continually evade us, right? Because we're, I don't know, operating from the wrong playbook or using a, a you know, a manual that wasn't designed for, for this machine, you know? So I think there's a couple things to, you know, before we talk about stumbling blocks, I think it's important to identify what is, what does the potential mean? You know, who's, I, who's defining your potential? Is it you or someone else? Uh, what story are you telling about how to get there? What map or model are you using? Are you too reliant on the steps in that map or model? Are you willing to burn that map and try something completely different tomorrow. I think that all of that will inform the process of fulfillment, you know? And I don't wanna to get too woo woo with it. You know, I don't want to feel like it's like pulling a sword out of a fucking stone, you know, like it's fate or destiny, you know? In some cases it can feel that mythic and that large and that important or purposeful. But I think it, to some degree, fulfilling your potential can sometimes just mean getting the things done you know that that you need to get done that week you know um showing up for your partner or your your, your spouse or your children or your family in ways that that you feel are important right like all of the giving you know giving to giving back to your community, you know, supporting your, 
your neighborhood or your city or your town or you know leaving the world a better place all of that stuff in very small ways small but meaningful ways can also be very much just like i am living up to my potential like this is what i'm here to do and and i'm on the right path to doing it um I, it all comes down i think to breaking the big thing down into small things right which is something we talked about in the visionary leadership book i think it comes down to if I see myself as something greater, or if there's some kind of self-transcendence happening, right, or shift in behavior or identity, uh, what are the small steps I need to, to take? What is the next best thing that I need to do uh, in order to wake up and affirm that that is who I am every day or um, map new responses in my brain or chart new you know forge new paths or grooves in the in the way i move around the world whether it's the you know the way i drive my vehicle or what the the route i take when i drive my all of that like what needs to change in sometimes the smallest ways um is a question i think we can ask to to get to that bigger you know am i really living out my purpose am i really being all that i can be I think of the story of the Buddha, right? Like leaving his ivory tower and seeing poverty and sickness and death in the streets of his town as a prince and saying, what is this all of a sudden? Why was this kept from me? You know, like the revelation that there is suffering in the world, you know, was kept from him. And then he made it as his life mission to crack the problem or the formula of human suffering you know um and attachment right and desire so i feel like stumbling blocks would be different for him on a on a road you know if he was carried on a you know if he was used to being carried on the back of an elephant and wasn't down in the 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 dirt you know um but most of us aren't there. We're, we're walking the streets with all the pain and the suffering and the sickness and the death around us. So, um, you know, allowing those stumbling blocks to inform our process and really affirm for us that, that we are doing the right thing and we are giving more than we take and we are leaving the world a better place. And again, I just had a talk with my men's group last night about that you know, how to plant generation, generationally plant trees that we know that we will never sit in the shade of, right? Like, how are we showing up for the world and giving, giving more than we're taking, making the world a better place than we left it? And a lot of guys are suffering right now. A lot, God, a lot of guys are in pain and they're just, whether it's their health or their family or their work situation, a lot of the guys are pretty low on the on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? And I and I think that you can't feel good or it isn't easy to give back or leave the world in a better place when you're in survival mode. And I think a lot of people are just simply in survival mode right now. So talking about something like fulfilling potential or living out your purpose is way up on the top of the that you know the self-actualization pinnacle of that um, hierarchy of needs and it just isn't really it's not that it isn't a priority but I, I i don't think most people can imagine how in the world they might get there from where they are right now they can't see how they can possibly get out of survival mode into maintenance into community into right like how do you climb up the, the steps and and navigate towards something greater when you got to figure out where your next meal or paycheck or medication or surgery or whatever is coming from, right? That's, that's hard. I may have completely digressed on your question there. Apologize. That's all right. And that, but that is a good, like a good point to this, right? Like it's also not really any good to to beat yourself up if you're just trying to survive at the time. Like sometimes you have to coast. Sometimes you have to put large goals on the back burner in order to get through the short term day or week or whatever it is. Yeah, just don't turn the burner off. Let it simmer. 
you know, turn down the heat. Don't give it all your attention, but don't, don't throw that, you know, don't throw whatever it is you're cooking in the garbage. That's, that's the key. You know, if we can just stay, allow what comes to us to come to us freely from others and be grateful and be appreciative uh, of what's coming to us in real time as it arises it doesn't matter if you're making taking big swings and you know living out your dreams sometimes you your priorities are yourself and that's okay for a while as long as we don't lose sight of where you want to be who you want to be or who you are. I love that. Has there ever been a moment in your life personally where you got really hurt by someone, you got burned by someone and you had this opportunity to be like, fuck people. Like, honestly, like everybody sucks, but you, you chose a different way. It's like, I, I think there's a point where people that I believe who love humanity, who, who value potential made a choice somewhere in their lives where they're like, I am not going to be jaded. I am not going to let one person's bad action deter me from believing in other people's potential and goodness. Am, am I, am I right? I I've talked to a few people who've had this moment, but I'm curious about you. I mean, yeah. I mean, I've had a pretty charmed life. I don't, I can't even any conflict or disappointment or betrayal that I've experienced is so minuscule, um, you know, com compared to some others that I know. And I think that, I think there's a cumulative effect. You know, I feel like there are, man, I can't find a word to describe this other than there's an author, um, Carolyn Mace, uh, who writes about spiritual contracts. And I can't help but imagine this being uh, about the contracts that you have in place with various people in your life. And I feel like if those contracts are invalidated or betrayed in some way, I feel like speaking for myself, I've always had another one to hold on to. I've always had another agreement in place or another person I could put my trust in or another mentor I could reach out to because that's the life I had created for myself, right? I had spun a web where I could always, you know, well, let me lean over here for a while if I need to shift my energy, right? I'm not feeling supported over here. So I'm going to, I'm going to lean into this for a month and see see if I feel held over here, right? But for people who either don't have that support system in place or haven't put it in place for themselves or maybe just only have a couple of those threads or webs or contracts in place in their life and you know what little they have is betrayed or severed or violated in some way, there's a cumulative and, and that keeps happening which I think is what you're describing, right? This, mm -hmm. this feeling of betrayal or abandonment or apathy or exhaustion or impotence, all of this stuff that just builds up. And it's like, eventually the person says, well, never, why should I even try? That's, you know, sea levels are rising. It, this isn't mine to fix, right? Like, why should I even bother? You know, I think community is important. You know, clearly, I mean, I just referenced the men's group. I feel like that's a place where people come in. You know, we have ours monthly and I feel like people come in pretty low energy. And by the end of the call, by the end of the 90 minutes, people are leaving a little more inspired and feeling a little more held and supported and uh, seen and heard. And I feel like if more people had that kind of community, or connection, you know, I feel like there's this dichotomy between feeling like, well, it's COVID and I don't see my friends anymore. 
and there's not much I can do about that. And then there's like, well, like, and I, and I can't afford to pay for a therapist. Right. And I feel like, I feel like it's either or for people and there's no both. And I feel like, why, why don't you just start up a conversation with somebody, you know, like literally anywhere, you know, what, what are the small steps that you can take to build that community up around you or to show up in a, in a space and be vulnerable and let people see parts of you that might even be a conversation starter. Right. Or, um, or, you know, yeah, it's like treating your body and your treating your whole self as, as the, as the first twig in the building of a community, you know, it's like putting yourself out there as the kindling for a greater fire. And I feel like there's just no in between for people. It's like, well, I don't have any friends and I'm not going to pay for it. So here I am, you know, instead of just asking in each moment, you know, what can I do? What is my next best step in this moment to, to maybe reach out and connect or who can I call today? Who can I reconnect with today? Um, you know, who can I support today? Right. Again, it's like, what, what can you give? You know, that it's always a two-way street. Well, let me speak for myself. I feel like I, um, the walls I've built uh, between me um, and some people are out of self-preservation you know they're out of putting boundaries in place just because i don't need to hear the I mean, whatever i don't need to hear the the negativity or the whatever i don't need that energy in my life kind of thing you know um but i think there's a time when i think i need to kind of inventory you know this has happened like oh have i built up too many walls right like what am i trying to protect myself from and maybe it's time to maybe just put a window in one of these walls or take one wall down right so i mean that's an active that's a lot of work you know it's probably more work taking one down than it is putting one up so um that effort uh can be hard to take on for somebody who's then you know sheltered themselves into a place of exhaustion and fatigue so I, yeah, I, I do. I think it's a daily inventory of, you know, what am I protecting myself from and where can I reach out? Who can I connect with in, in, in the spirit of, or aligned to the vision of yourself and what you're trying to create or yeah, the potential you're trying to fulfill. How, how does one discover their potential do you think what it, what are the best ways that people can go about finding something that really connects with them uh for me it was pretty clear uh for me growing up that it was going to it was going to have to do with creativity whether it was writing books or drawing pictures or playing music or performing or whatever that was, even with the facilitation, a lot of that is performative, you know, you, you know, it from an early age, right. That can be one, one way. I also think that you can just try different things and there are certain things that feel good and things that don't feel good. And if you are, if you allow yourself to feel right, that's kind of the key here is that if you can, feel the good stuff and um, lean into that, um, I think people can find real purpose and fulfillment in that way, in just intuiting or navigating where, you know, the, like the, their, what pops the, the sails of their heart, you know, like where are they being carried or pulled toward? Um, and then I know there's people out there who just fucking have no idea. And they're just, they don't, why am I even here? Like, what's the, you know, I don't know what I give back, you know? And uh, that's, it's difficult to assess, but the, what I recommend in that situation is listing all the things that you, uh, that you know, you're not here to do, right? Start with the, 
I call it the not to do list, right? Like it's, uh, it's the, what are, what, what are the things that you know are not your purpose? What are the things you know you don't love, right? Eventually you'll narrow the field a bit and it might take time, you know, I, I'm thinking of a couple of coaching sessions in particular where I thought, well, we'll just do the not to do list and we'll arrive at what this person really loves and really wants. It, it wasn't that simple. You know, it, it, it took a few sessions. It took weeks, you know, potentially months to, to really have conversations about the things that you, you're not passionate about, the things that you're dispassionate about. Eventually, though, what happens is that you're creating polarity. You're creating um, tension between things that you don't, I mean, that you're not drawn toward and the, and the things that you are. So I think even just starting that list could, could be helpful uh, for those struggling to identify what their, what their purpose and potential is. If they stick with it, I think that polarity emerges. What? I've seen it. I've seen it emerge. We'll put it that way. What would you say to somebody questioning their potential or, or maybe who feels like giving up or maybe that what they're doing isn't as important, even if it makes them happy? Like what, what would you directly say to somebody who was really doubting their own potential at this point? Try something new. I mean, I, I feel like that that is intelligence and that is data, right? whatever they're giving me in that moment, if they're saying I'm doing this thing and I'm not necessarily happy, right? And I don't feel like I'm living up to my potential. Well, then it, then the potential isn't here, right? It's, it's elsewhere. You've got to find that. So yeah, try something else. It means people who spend 20, 40 years at a job that they don't, they don't love. You know, they do it out of obligation. They do it out of sense of security, do it to care for their family to get a gold watch i don't know why they do it you know but they get it because it's safe and they stay there and to leave would be change and change hurts and is hard right so it's not a pet potential fulfilling it's not some great mythic quest you know that's not the there's, there's no sword to pull out of the stone there for them they're in the mud you know pu pushing the plow if they're not fulfilling their potential, I don't, you know, it's what can you try differently? What have you tried before? How did that feel? Is that what you want to keep feeling? Okay, what might, what might you try differently? What might you try tomorrow? You know, a series of coaching questions that would lead them to something new, something that they can commit to then. Okay, is that what you want to try to, tomorrow? When will you, you know, are you going to put that on your calendar? When are you going to make that happen? I mean, a, a series of questions that gets them to trying something new and committing to, to doing it at a certain time and place and finding out how that feels. It's all an experiment. And if that feels, still feels neutral to negative, well, then let's try something else. I mean, eventually you'll hit on something that's like, oh, I ate ice cream. And I felt something, you know, like... It was the one thing that I did all day where I was like, where I was happy. Okay. Do you want to be an ice cream taster? Do you want to buy an ice cream truck? Like, what is the, what is the thing there then, right? What is the thing that lights you up? I think that's confusing. I think that's the most confusing thing for people. It's like, I tried this and I didn't feel anything. I worked at a job for 20 years. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I just didn't feel anything. just did it. I mean, is there a need, you know, for people to feel like they are living up to their potential is that even important to people probably for some be. i don't know probably for some probably for others and what does it say about them uh the people who feel like they should be living up to a potential what does it say about them and what does it say about the people that don't you know that don't feel the need for that does that make them bad i don't think so does it make the people who feel like they have a a North Star and a divine purpose, does it make them good or better in some way? I don't think so. I just, I just think they have, they're just oriented to something. It's not a positive or a negative. It's just movement. It's just motion. It's just dynamism. So try to come at it without a value judgment, I guess is my point. You know, mm -hmm. not everybody needs a fucking divine calling, you know.
that's not in the cards for every human being on the planet. And you're not broken if you don't feel anything. But if you do feel something and you don't pursue it, you are going to regret it. Then you're going to start to feel something for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then you'll have a bunch of feelings if you ignore what you are being called toward or pulled toward. Yeah. There will be some dissonance there for sure. Some friction. I guess then to, to the people that do feel this calling, that they have this little voice that's itching at the back of them. Um, why should they make the time? Why should this, why should they not turn this back burner off in their survival mode? Why should they, they make the space in their lives to do it? Why should they not give up on this, this dream or this calling or this, this just need that they have that, that pushes them forward. Why would you say, keep going? I don't want to be dr too dramatic or like hyperbolic about this, but I do feel like I, my, my opinion, right. Is that a vision like that, a sense of purpose that is that strong or clear is a gift, you know, uh, regardless of your, sense of spirituality or the cosmos or what have you it's a sense of purpose is showing up in your consciousness for a reason right it's 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 been placed in front of you like a signpost whether that was a predetermined path you're on or you just stumbled upon it matters little right the sign is there you either read it or you don't so if you do have a purpose you feel like you've been shown what your purpose or your calling is you are you have a choice. You either follow that path or ignore it to your own peril. You know, you can ignore those signs. You can, um, I feel like it's just like a, a sense of like spiritual lobotomy, right? Where you are killing or severing parts of yourself by disconnecting the tether between you and that signpost or that North star or that purpose. And if you want to do that, that's okay just realize that in that moment you that's your choice right like don't bitch about it later make a conscious choice to move on maybe another signpost will appear down the road maybe not i don't know but don't live with regret right maybe the same signpost will pop up maybe you get a second third fourth chance to follow that road down the road i don't know um but if you choose not to follow it don't don't self-abuse think negatively just move on but if you do follow it i mean you've got to you've got to give it all you've got right i mean it's not just it then becomes not just a path you've taken it becomes the entire world you're building the the, the gravel under your feet becomes the forest around you becomes the the you know kingdom i keep using these this mythical language but like it becomes the, the, the world you're in. Like that's the opportunity. One step down that road is the first opportunity to build that world around you. Um, and if you think a building is missing, well, then you put a building there, you know, you feel like there need to be people in the picture. Well, then you invite them into the picture until you've built a, a, a community or a family or an enterprise or whatever it is. It fulfills your vision of the world. I mean, that's what these world changing um, visions are capable of. And for the people that hold them and decide to act on them and execute them, um, they can be a positive, you know, force in the world. These visions can be insanely negative too, but um, for the people that have the stamina and the determination to world build like they were in a video game and it's all just, it's all just matter and atoms and I'm going to move stuff around until it syncs up with what I want to see. And any artist or painter or photographer will tell you the same, like I'm tr or musician or composer. I am trying to recreate what is in my head outside my body. That's the whole purpose of this is I'm trying to create and bring my vision to fruition and make it real in the world, make it tangible so I can share it with other people. So for those who want to pursue their sense of purpose, it is exactly that. It's composing the music 
And not just that, it's pushing beyond to hiring the 20 musicians that it takes to perform the music. And then the crew of 10 to record and capture the performance, right? And if it's still not right, well, then you got to start from scratch again, right? Uh, for the people who are trying to build businesses, it's the hiring of people and oh, I think this is the right staff. Nope, these weren't the right people. It's not matching my vision. It's not what I'm wanting to create. It's not the world I'm trying to build. It's not happening. So you get new people in place. Anybody who has a vision and is working toward creating that vision in the world has to make those kinds of decisions in real time. That's what that's the responsibility you're taking on. So if you're going to do it, do it with your whole heart. And if you're not, find someone else's vision that most closely aligns with what you want to do in the world and help them build that. But if you have a vision in, uh, of your own, you know, a purpose that you're trying to fulfill, you got to go all in. You give it all you have. Is there anything else you want to talk from to my privileged perch here in St. Petersburg, Florida at my standing desk in the beautiful Bear Creek. And, and look, I certainly appreciate what you're talking about. You're, and, and that's where, you know, you, you talking about survival mode and keeping things on the back burner, I think shows a level of like awareness about your world. You're not sitting here just being like, everything's easy. Go to get free college. You're going to build. Everybody can live the American dream. You're not saying that you're, you're saying, don't give up on the light inside of you. And if you hear something, chase it. Yeah. And it's going to be fucking hard. And if it's hard, ask for help. Don't stop reaching out. That's actually, so that's a really good point too. Like I, having done some of my own research, I've come to find out that I'm considered a solo perfectionist, which means we are terrified to ask for help when we need it. What do you say to that person that is like, I have this dream. I am so afraid of somebody crushing this that I don't even want to talk about it. Because if I, if I, if, what is it they say that the idea is easier to believe than the reality of it. So we would rather hold on to the idea of what we could have done as opposed to actually testing it. Um, what do you, what do you say to that person that is terrified to, to reach out and ask for help or ask for a mentorship or, or um, test if the world is as nice of a place as we're saying it is right now? I mean, it, it can be perfect in your mind. You know, uh, hold on to it if all you want is the blueprints of a really beautiful mansion, right? If you're happy with that, it's great. Just look at a picture on a fucking wall. Frame the blueprints, you know? Vision boards. Yeah. You know? Yeah, write the song and keep it on paper, right? Design the building and put it behind glass. If you're happy with that, great. But if you want to make it real, if you want the song to be sung or be performed, if you want to hear it, if you want it to actually make vibrations in the air and in the world and go hit people's you know, eardrums and hearts and move through people's bodies with sound waves, if you want to actually bring it to life, if you want that building to be a three-dimensional place that people can inhabit and move through and live and be and work inside of and play and you know that if you want this stuff to come to life you gotta hire musicians who are sometimes hard to work with you gotta call a contractor who's sometimes an asshole you know like you've gotta put yourself out there in ways that are work it's work you know, it starts with one step. What is the one step today? Just today. What can I do? Right. What are the three big rocks that I'm working on? What's the one next best thing I can do today? I mean, it just break that big thing into smaller things. It doesn't have to be insurmountable. These things happen over time. You can point to anything in the world. You know, it took a lot of time to make real patience, faith, you know, belief you know and that's the other thing is this thing is scalable it's things like you got to have faith in the musicians that you hire you have to have faith in that contractor you call you can't just have people standing around having faith in you that eventually you're going to bring your vision to fruition you've got to share that faith and belief in potential with those that you bring on to build it 
So you've got to figure out how to translate that and what that looks like in the behavior and the actions that you take. All that belief uh, is scalable.